All right, guys, I think we are good. Are we broadcasting? I'm hoping so. People are hopping on, so we must be. Welcome to the Fixed Blood Sugar webinar. I'm Joe Barton. No, I'm kidding, I'm not. I'm Leslie Prinz. You I'm don't look anything like Joe Barton. <laughs> uh, Joe's actually in um, our annual planning meeting uh, with the leadership team. So he's figuring out all of the fun things that are gonna take place for next year and kind of recapping uh, this past year. And from what I've heard, um, some reporting that I'm getting back, my husband is on that team as well. And so it sounds like they're having a little bit of fun, but just uh, very thankful and grateful for a wonderful year and looking forward to an even better 2021. And I think that's probably what a lot of people are thinking too. They're ready for a great 2021, right? Um, Wow, we have a lot of people hopping on here already. This is great. We're here with Dr. Scott Saunders. He's amazing. I feel like sometimes we just don't even give him a big enough shout out. I text him with the most random stuff, random pictures. And he's like, oh, we'll try this. Let's do this. Uh, I think I know what that could be. I'm not going to show him the pictures. Yeah, we won't show you the pictures. They're appropriate, but there's some cropping <laughs> that happen. Um, but even years and years of, of having him as my doctor uh, for my kids and my husband and I, and it's been wonderful. So we're super excited that he's here and we're glad that all of you are here for our We're Fixed Blood Sugar webinar. A lot of you are on Facebook, welcome. You can ask questions here live. So go ahead, if you're on Facebook, post them in the comments. If you are watching on Zoom, type it right in the Q&A. We're talking about type two. We're talking about the basics of type two. And um, we try to do that every other week. We welcome your questions, but it's good to review these things because sometimes it's uh, those little reminders that we need to make sure that we are doing things correctly. And also it may trigger some more questions from all of you. Uh, Dr. Saunders, you wanna give us a disclaimer for today? Okay, so the, 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 the advice that we, uh, that I give and the things that we talk about um, are, are for general information. Uh, the application of that information to you specifically uh, would depend on your circumstances. So uh, just be careful that you apply it properly and don't, uh, don't assume that because, oh, I heard Dr. Saunders say this or, or someone else uh, tried this, that it automatically applies to you. Um, because every situation is a little different, which is one of the things that I wanted to discuss today in the, uh, the, the basics. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why people have diabetes type two. It's, there's not just one reason. You know, I talk about, oh, you're toxic on sugar. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's a bottom line for, for almost everyone and that, but that's not even true for everyone. Uh, some people have type two because of a genetic abnormality. And I had one case, only one in 30 years that I, that I ever discovered, knew about, um, had an adult form of something called uh, maple syrup urine disease. It's a genetic abnormality, really rare, um, that, that one of the enzymes doesn't work for breaking down branch chain amino acids. And it has nothing to do with eating too much sugar. It's a protein problem. So, uh, so you have to look at this as, as uh, how does this apply to me and get the proper diagnosis. Now, uh, understanding that with the proper diagnosis, like let's see, say uh, even that the, the gentleman that I had who had uh, maple syrup urine disease, you know, he's 38 years old. And, uh, and he comes down with, you know, type two diabetes, he's not fat. And, uh, and the doctors just automatically put him on insulin. Oh, here, take some insulin. Uh, that'll do you good. And so uh, he starts taking insulin. It's not working. It's not bringing his sugar down. It's, uh, he's, he's not controlled by any means. And he feels horrible, you know, cause he's actually toxic on these amino acids. So, um, so it took a little while for us to figure out um, how to deal with that, how to get the, take the branched chain amino acids out of his diet completely 
Uh, and then, uh, but then also we still had to do the sugar thing because yeah, he's still in sugar, you know, he still has the type two thing. So that's why we did the, uh, the uh, diabetes solution kit the way we did. So we could have chosen a lot of different ways of handling type two diabetes, but we thought what is gonna be the one thing that everybody can do? You know, you could do fasting and you know what? Fasting works. I had a guy come in, um, he was uh, in his fifties and he needed a job really badly and he was a driver and he, but they wouldn't give him his commercial um, driver's license to transport people uh, and because he had diabetes, type two diabetes, high blood pressure and sleep apnea. And they're like, uh-uh. And he said, you know, um, if they put you on drugs and you're controlled, they'll give you, you know, a three month uh, extension on your license or whatever. But he says, no, no, I want the regular, you know, two year thing. Uh, so uh, so he, he came in, he said, what can I do about this? Well, he decided he was gonna do a cleanse. He did a bone broth cleanse after we discussed it, of course, what are your options? And we had done some tests, so we knew his, his uh, insulin was high, his blood sugar was high, and uh, he was pretty overweight. So, um, so he decided he was going to do a cleanse. 30 days of bone broth. And he, he documented the whole thing. Uh, he did a, his uh, blog, and, and he, was, he was blogging the whole thing. I was following along. He had three crock pots going 24 hours a day. These three crock pots are on. One has a big old ham bone in it. Uh, another one has a bunch of chicken bones. Another one has a bunch of beef bones. And he's just letting them simmer the whole time. And he's, you know, putting his spices in and everything. Uh, and then he goes, hmm, I feel like, um, oh, I feel like ham today. So he takes his thermos out and fills up his thermos with, uh, with his ham broth and, and takes that with him. And then, uh, and then the next day is, oh, I feel like chicken. He takes, takes chicken with him. Uh, and he did that for 30 days, he even came into the office to our grand opening party and all this food all over the place. And he just had his little um, thermos full of broth and uh, pouring it out and drinking that. And that's all, he didn't have any of our, our little goodies. Um, but in 30 days, he reversed his diabetes so that when they tested him, he did not test positive for diabetes. He tested negative. Um, he did his, uh, his uh, uh, sleep study uh, came out normal uh, and his blood pressure was normal. So he got his two year commercial driver's license uh, uh, endorsement or whatever it is. So, um, so in 30 days, he was able to reverse all of that. Um, because that's what he could do. But you know what? That same thing, because um, the broth has a lot of branched chain amino acids in it, would have been terrible for the other guy that had uh, the, the maple syrup urine disease. So, you know, that worked for him, but that's not going to work for everybody. So for some of you, you might go, see, I can do 30 days of bone broth. That's easy. Um, a, um, uh, John Christopher was a, a very famous American doctor herbalist uh, who uh, was, you know, hired by like the army to get to cure people, and he could do a lot with herbs that uh, fix things that nobody else could. Uh, and he was a big proponent of a cleanse, like a thirty-day cleanse. Um, and they used one called the Master Cleanse, uh, and it's a uh, uh, what is it? Uh, lemonade, right? And I think like cayenne, maple syrup. Yeah, cayenne, le lemon, cayenne, maple syrup. Yeah, but it's just like two tablespoons of maple syrup in a quart. So it's not like lemonade, like sweet lemonade. Um, and uh, he said, yeah, 30 days of that will cure just about anything. Uh, and uh, 30 days of fasting is a really good uh, the thing to do anyway, because uh, it fix, it pulls all the cholesterol out of your arteries. Uh, it actually uh, takes all of the tau proteins out of your brain. 
Uh, it detoxifies your whole body. It's, it's really, really good. And the reason I don't usually recommend the master cleanse like uh, John Christopher did is because most of our society is so overburdened with carbohydrates and the master cleanse is primarily carbohydrates, you know, the lemon juice, the maple syrup, uh, cayenne pepper, but you know, that, that you're, you're, you're adding carbohydrates and you're making insulin. So I prefer the broth just because it's primarily fat and protein and very little uh, carbs or almost no carbs. And so it doesn't induce insulin resistance the way the, the master cleanse, well, could. So, um, so the basics of diabetes is you probably have some reason for having diabetes. Sometimes it just people love sugar and they love sweets and they eat a bunch of sweets and that's the, the biggest reason. And, and, and certainly that's uh, uh, consistent with all of the research, but there are other reasons. I had um, another patient, his wife, and he were both a little overweight, but he had diabetes. And uh, so he said, okay, my wife and I are gonna do the, uh, the low carb thing. We're gonna do a keto diet. And so, you know, he's going to restaurants and eating uh, a pound of meat uh, at a time and uh, just, you know, literally like pounding down the, the uh, meat and eggs and fish and cheese and, uh, um, living on bacon and like, like the bacon and sausage diet with, uh, with omelet, you know, so, um, he, uh, he could not understand why his wife was losing weight and she was looking really good and he was gaining weight and getting worse and his blood sugar was going higher. Uh, he says, I'm swear I'm not eating any carbohydrates at all. And I'm like, dude, you're sensitive to, to, um, to uh, proteins sometimes. And proteins always cause the blood sugar to go up, but it's, uh, uh, blood sugar or insulin to rise. But some people have a bigger rise with proteins than others. So in his case, he was just really sensitive to proteins. So he's like, what can I eat? <laughs> I was like, didn't have much. Um, those kind of people have, need a high fiber diet. The only thing that's high is fiber. So they don't eat fat, they don't eat carbohydrates, they don't eat proteins, they just eat fiber. Uh, what does that mean? Well, then you have uh, broccoli and spinach and uh, raw carrots and celery and uh, cucumbers and Brussels sprouts. And you know, your, your, your types of foods you eat are just very different in a high fiber diet as opposed to uh, you know, a high fat diet or a high protein diet. So each of you is different. Each of you is going to have a different way of handling it. So the reason we did the, uh, the diabetes solution kit the way we did was because this is a good foundation. Just getting the carbohydrates out is a good foundation. It's a good way to start. And most people will find uh, that Re reverses the problem, gets the insulin down, and allows them to um, then go into phase two where they can start eating more and, and not have to take medications and not uh, have to worry about high blood sugar. Um, however, some of you may find that that's not enough, you know, especially if you're eating really high proteins. This is good. I'm going to just share this quick. Luann, who, who has been on our uh, webinars for a while, sent this in and said, more exciting news. She did give us an update last week. So here's another update. More exciting news. Went for three-month blood work, September 11th, diagnosed with type 2. Her A1C was 7.9. December 19th, her blood work, which is three months later, her A1C was 6 and I'm so thrilled. I'm Canadian. So those are Canadian numbers, she says. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. So six is in the non-diabetes range. She no longer has diabetes. Um, it's officially called pre-diabetes. So that's, that's really good. That's really well done in only three months. Yes. Excellent. And I think she has been very consistent with the Diabetes Solution Kit, if I remember correctly. Is that right, Luann? 
I think you've been following it to a T and, and, and maybe even a part of the 610 reset actually, um, which you, if you're not familiar with that, that is another group that we have on Facebook. You're welcome to join, uh, but it's focusing on stopping eating after six in bed by 10. Um, and there's, there's a lot of information about that. We've done some webinars um, on that. I think we called it uh, metabolic, anabolic something. So <laughs> you can find all of our Barton webinars. There's a link. If you um, go to bartonwebinar.com, there's a link to our YouTube channel and you can subscribe right there to our channel. And we have, this is our 70th episode today. So we have covered some really good stuff concerning type two answered a lot of your questions and you will just find a huge library of information there. So be sure to check it out. Um, and I will post that. I'll post that link here in the comments. Um, I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to start asking some questions, I think, and we'll kind of roll with that if that's okay. Are you good with that, Dr. Scott? Okay. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Mike said, I just received my Cinechroma and Nervala. How much of each do I take daily? Okay. okay. Um, the Cinechroma, um, one capsule has 5,000 units of vitamin D. One capsule daily is sufficient as a supplement to uh, have uh, uh, enough of the um, selenium, chromium, vanadium, vitamin D, uh, vitamin K. So, so that's all, just one capsule daily. And it's usually taken with breakfast. Um, the Nerval is a little different in that you start off, if you have neuropathy, um, start off with two a day, one in the morning, one at night and do that for uh, about 90 days and then, and then cut back to one a day. Um, so it's not done forever, it's just a little different. We have had people who, if they're going off like metformin uh, and they want the extra boost from Cinechroma, um, you can take two a day. It's, it's not gonna be too much to take two a day, uh, but that will uh, tend to make you more sensitive to your insulin better. Uh, until you have good insulin sensitivity, your insulin is down in normal, and then you can uh, go back to one a day. Wonderful. And you can also find more information about our supplements, what they're used for, et cetera. If you go to bartonwebinar.com, it'll link you to all of that, uh, as well as our diabetes solution kit. So um, lots of hellos and Merry Christmas. This is great. It's so crazy to me that it's Christmas week already. Uh, exciting. I'm in South Dakota and we don't even have snow, if you can believe that. We usually always have snow, um, but it's, it's, it's great. Mm. I'm okay with you it. need a white Christmas. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I know how January, February, March, part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with it for now. Yeah, yeah, today's like, or yesterday was the first day of winter, right? Yes. That's yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Merry Christmas from Florida. That is actually where I would prefer to be for most of the Christmases. <laughs> okay, uh, lots of hellos. Oh my gosh, all our friends are on. Krish, Merry Christmas. Okay, I was trying to get down to the questions. We got so many kind comments here. Uh, Luann said, yes, yeah, she follows everything to a T and watches all of our webinars. She gets an A plus, she is a super student. Thank uh -huh. you, Luann, that's awesome. I'm so happy for you and proud of you. Okay, this is from Sita. Um, I'm gonna try to see. I'm taking I'm taking resveratrol. Resveratrol. Okay, I've heard of this. Um, should I switch to sugar balance? I'm not strict with the diet. I can only do it for about a week. Any suggestions, please? Okay, um, resveratrol is great. Uh, it's a uh... It's an antioxidant. And if you were to try to list all of the antioxidants, there are hundreds of them. There's fat soluble and water soluble and uh, uh, most of the colors in your fruits and vegetables, the, uh, the uh, things that like, they're called astaxanthins and zeaxanthins and beta carotenes and alpha carotenes, carotenoids. Um, all of these colorings uh, are uh, antioxidants. Uh, the, uh, among some minerals and some amino acids. And anyway, there's hundreds of them. Resveratrol is one of them. And resveratrol is great. And, um, 
I look at it as just another antioxidant. It's not like there's anything magical about it. In fact, there was so much hype about it. And they found out that a lot of the research was fabricated, that it really wasn't as great as everybody said it was. It didn't really um, uh, allow, uh, we were told that um, the rats could eat anything they want and if they took resveratrol, they would stay young and healthy. Um, and uh, it turned out that wasn't really true. So, um, but resveratrol is, it's an antioxidant, um, but it's not magic. Uh, getting fruit and vegetables is the best thing to do. It isn't uh, taking the pills, whether it's resveratrol or, um, or the glucomand or, or whatever other uh, kinds of things you're doing. Um, they're fine. They're okay. Just like, you know, I was talking about Synechroma. Synechroma is a helper. I just found as I'm doing testing that most people are deficient in vitamin D and vanadium and chromium and selenium. And these are things that are important for using sugar properly and almost everybody's deficient. So I go, okay, let's put something together that has those in it so that, so that people could, it'll be a lot easier for people to reverse that insulin resistance. So while the supplements can be helpful, it doesn't take the place of the food. So you're still better off eating the, the beautiful colors uh, with your fruits and vegetables um, the greens and reds and oranges and uh, all of that stuff. And having a sweet potato instead of a white potato, for example, or something like that. Wait a minute, sweet potato would not still not be on the phase one, but in phase two, you might be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, this is a good question. Uh, kind of a follow-up to that. Rose had asked this in an email as well. When we are doing the 20 carbs, that is recommended in our phase one of the diabetes solution kit. Do we do those um, as net carbs? Oh, good question. Okay. Yes, please. Net carbs. Remember I was talking about a high fiber diet. Um, uh, some people, they don't tolerate a lot of protein. They can eat fat uh, and they can eat fiber, but protein and, and carbohydrates, uh, carbohydrates meaning sugars, uh, are going to cause them problems. But, car but the carbohydrates that are fiber don't do that. So you always subtract the fiber out. So uh, you don't eat anything out of, I'm not recommending that you eat anything out of a box or a bag. But if you look on the box and they have that little uh, nutrition facts on there and it says uh, total carbohydrates, 30 grams, uh, car uh, fiber, 20 grams. Ah, that means 10 grams are the net carbs, you subtract the fiber from it. Um, or if you're eating something like a potato, then it, that has a lot of fiber in it too. And you can subtract the fiber from the total potato starch <laughs> and find out how big your potato can be. Which uh, get more food then. So yeah, good. Okay. Uh, James has a question about vitamin D. He was told that it does not work in the body unless you take it with some form of fat. Is that true? Oh, good question. Yeah, um, vitamin D is not is, is it's a steroid hormone, and it's it's it will be absorbed to some extent. But if you take it with a fatty meal, it is better absorbed because then you really when you when you eat fat the bile acids come out and, uh, and they allow, uh, they little globules that allow that fat to be absorbed. And since, uh, since uh, vitamin D is a steroid hormone, then if you eat it with a fatty meal, it does get absorbed better, um, probably. Some people probably absorb it okay anyway. Okay, more questions about fat. Should most fat be deleted as as soon as possible from your diet. This is from Jay. Oh man. Um, okay, there are only three things that are a problem in type two diabetes. Uh, number one is carbohydrates. Number two is protein. Number three is fat. Um, why? Well, because that is energy. And the problem with type two is energy. And, and it's not that there's not enough, there's too much energy. So 
Yeah, you know, on, on phase one of the diabetes solution, we allow fat and you don't have to count fat, um, but should it be eliminated as much as possible? Yes, you know, there are so, there's so much research on how uh, low carb, low protein, low fat diets uh, help people live longer, they live better, uh, they get less illness, uh, they don't get cancer as much. Um, and it's, you know, the, the healthiest type of diet from all the research is actually a vegan diet, as long as it's uh, a good vegan diet. Uh, it's kind of funny. In California, we have a lot of vegans, right? Because they go like, well, I wouldn't eat anything that has eyeballs because that's horrible. You should never do that. And, uh, and so um, I asked, well, how do you get so overweight? And um, it turns out they live on bread and pasta and rice and cereal. And they eat cereal with almond milk for, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> um, and so, uh, and I say, well, you know, uh, you're vegan, uh, like vegetarian. Don't you eat vegetables? Oh, I hate vegetables. <laughs> so they live on grains. And, and of course, that's all sugar. I found Why? a new book that's coming out next year called Pegan, which is paleo vegan is the recommended oh. eat, which actually really would make the most sense. Probably, probably it sounds like it would be a very sensible diet. Yeah. 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 So ve vegans that actually eat vegetables, that, that's a healthy diet. Okay. It's good. Okay. We get this question on every webinar. And so we actually have recorded some things that we're going to put on our website so that we can direct you guys there. So we'll answer this again um, because this is so important. We get a lot of questions about this. Chris is wondering uh, why are his numbers higher in the morning, even when it's acid? Yeah. You so you've gone, you've gone for hours, eight hours, 10 hours without eating. And, uh, and so your stomach is empty, your intestines are empty, you're not absorbing any sugar. What the heck? How come my blood sugar has suddenly gone way up, way out there? Well, the reason is, is because it went down when you're not absorbing uh, sugar from your intestines into your blood, then you, and your insulin is high, then uh, the cells are still taking in sugar like they're supposed to. That's what the insulin tells them to do. But you're not getting it from your intestines, so your blood sugar starts dropping too low. And as it as it drops too low, the the uh, pancreas puts out a different hormone called glucagon. And the glucagon says, uh-oh, we're getting too low, make more sugar. So then the liver starts spitting out all this sugar and, uh, and pumping it out into the blood. And then your blood sugar goes up and you're like, what the heck? I haven't eaten anything in eight hours. My blood sugar is like 200. How did that happen? It's, uh, it's glucagon. It's just, it's a normal, natural thing. And it's actually kind of good. And it's good meaning you do have a response, a glucagon response where, you're, where you can raise the blood sugar from the liver, which means you can take the uh, carbohydrates that's, uh, that's stored in the liver um, that, uh, that um, the liver uh, makes it from protein and from starches that it stores. Uh, anyway, so you can take it out uh, and put it into your blood. So the processes are working okay. So it's not a bad thing. It's okay. Don't worry about it. In fact, uh, just let that be and don't worry about it at all. Okay. Good information. We have some more information from Luann. She says, this is Luann. This is our A student. She said she uh, follows the diabetes solution kit. She eats between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. only. She follows this webinar doing yoga and weightlifting on Zoom twice per week, going three times per week in January. She walks her dogs every day and she takes one Synechroma every day and two on weekends. She just ordered her turmeric. So yes, that, so <laughs> I mean, you guys need to know what you need to do. Yeah. There you go. I was just uh, writing about leadership this morning or reading about leadership. And uh, leadership is uh, being, being, is doing something and say, follow me. So Luann's our leader. <laughs> that is awesome. Good. This is good, Luann. Thank you so much. 
Uh, Marilyn is asking, what do you think about berberine in treating type two? Um, berberine is, it can be very useful. Um, berberine, man, berberine is an amazing herb. Um, as I study more berberine, uh, it, uh, it really helps the metabolism in certain ways because it modulates the metabolism. It's not just um, that it does a certain thing, it changes the way your genes work uh, to keep your metabolism uh, on track, so to speak. Um, and it is so good with metabolism that it also is good for a ton of other things besides type two, um, cancer. Uh, it's been shown to prevent cancer or decrease uh, cancer, uh, shrink it down. Um, because it, the way it modulates metabolism, it doesn't let the cancer uh, overuse the sugar either. So your other cells don't either. So um, because of its functions, multiple functions in the body, berberine is a great idea. Berberine is really um, amazing. It's an amazing herb. Okay. Oh, so many comments. I got to go back and read through all these. Okay. Um, a question from an anonymous attendee, the diabetes solution kit says that you should take 400 milligrams of vitamin B1. Their Nervala bottle says a capsule contains only 75 milligrams. Why would that be? Okay. Um, because the Nervala is, is in a different form. It's a, a fat soluble form. And so 150 milligrams is the, the dose for uh, the vitamin B1, which is the um, benfotiamine. Um, and so uh, one of those twice a day, 75 milligrams twice a day, uh, that's what the research has shown was the most useful. The 400 milligrams of B1 is a water soluble form. So it's still, uh, that's kind of a, a standard dose uh, for people to prevent them from getting uh, nerve damage in the first place. Okay, Krish is asking if there's any updates on adult stem cells. They were trying to use that to rebuild optic nerves. Um, if this effort is successful, there will be great news for all who suffer from angular glaucoma and loss of vision in eyes or loss of vision totally. Any updates that you're aware of? Yeah, I, w I was reading about it recently, and uh, it, it isn't as amazing as everybody thought, but it can be very useful. Um, the, it's partly the way it's done. They can use adult stem cells, um, and, but part of it is activating them. The other part is being anabolic, because if the person isn't anabolic, then the stem cells don't do anything. They, they only do something in the anabolic phase. So um, that's part of our 610 reset program is how to become anabolic. Uh, and if you're anabolic, then you can use your own stem cells. Your body will use these stem cells that you have all over anyway uh, to start repairing your body. So that's what the 610 reset is. Uh, what thing we just got, we had a whole webinar on fasting uh, one time. And so being anabolic is, is more beneficial than injecting the stem cells. Okay, let's see here. There's good information. Um, this is from Glenn. Let's see, I started the diabetic reversal program on October 1st, it was 220 pounds, A1C 7.7 .7 today. 188 pounds, 5.9 A1C, praise God. Doctor took me off metformin and cut my small five milligram cholesterol med to every other day. I'm now doing keto to keep losing bit by bit, heading to a goal of 180. Is keto good long-term? And why am I taking the iodine? Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, great, good work. Okay. That is good. So keto, keto long-term, that's a really good question. Um, and, and the answer is it depends. If, if your metabolism is as good keto, that's good. However, uh, for general information, the best way to do it is to be ketogenic sometimes, 
but not all the time. So uh, being ketogenic uh, while you're getting your insulin down and everything is a great idea. Uh, but for long term, you should sometimes be using sugar and sometimes be using fat. So I did this really cool study um, Nike did on uh, marathon runners because they wanted a marathon runner that the, the, the object was to have a marathon run in under two hours. And uh, so that's like, these guys are sprinting for 26.2 miles. This is, this is a really fast you know, race. Uh, they even had drafters drafting that. So they had sprinters in front, they're running around the track and the drafters come in and they run behind them. And then the drafter goes out and another one comes in uh, this, you know, the, and the, the marathon runners are going around. And, well, so uh, they found that they couldn't get them to run a full marathon by carbo loading. They couldn't use sugar for the entire 26.2 miles. So they're like, okay, what can we do? I know let's have them burn fat because it only takes a pound of fat to run 26.2 miles. And everybody has a pound of fat, even marathon runners. So, um, so they're like, then, then they could just run if they're, you know, if they're burning fat. Well, the problem is that fat is a low octane fuel. They couldn't get the speed with the fat. So even though um, they, they were able to run uh, the entire distance without the, the extra card, without taking in you know, the glucose solution during the, during the race, um, they, they didn't get the speed. So in order to have the speed, they needed to be able to burn at least 20% carbohydrates and then 80% fat. Uh, and, and that got them the speed that the carbohydrates gave them the speed and the fat gave them the distance. Uh, and they were able to do an under two hour marathon. Um, so really interesting. That's, that's just like a, this narrow idea of a marathon runner, but just as an idea, um, I, I wouldn't suspect that, that uh, having a ketogenic diet uh, all the time is a great idea. I think sometimes burning fat and sometimes burning carbs is probably a better way to go. Okay. Uh, Narissa is asking, can age affect your blood sugar? Oh, well, definitely it does, but not because you're old. Um, it only affects your blood sugar because... Um, as time goes on, all the things that we've been doing all our lives, like uh, storing glycogen, storing sugar, um, they, they, they come to a, a limit. So everything in biology is, is you, you have this curve. Uh, and, and so when you reach high up on the curve, then everything shuts down and it's not working anymore. And you're like done. Um, so, but it's not because you're old. It's just because you've reached that limit. And so what do you, you can reverse that. That's all reversible. If you want to uh, fix it, then, you know, like that guy that did the 30 day fast. Yeah, he fixed it. Just uh, brought him back to a 20 year old sugar level. All right. Uh, Susan is asking, is the turmeric root better than the pill? Um, a, a yes and no, it depends. Um, the pill usually has, uh, it's processed somewhat and it contains things that help it be absorbed. Um, like uh, there's black pepper with it. Um, it's really interesting. I was speaking to a woman in my office, she's from India. And, uh, and she says, oh yeah, you know what? That's interesting. We always cook turmeric. When we make curry, we always use black pepper. Uh, and I'm like, oh, you know, that, that's really interesting. And, you know, she didn't know that there was no, the re but there's plenty of research that you get like 20 times the amount of curcumin absorbed from the turmeric if you have black pepper with it. So just having the root and you're probably not going to absorb very much. It has to have some processing, which is cooking um, and then adding in stuff like, uh, like the black pepper. Okay, Chris is wondering if glutathione helps vision. Um, glutathione helps everything. This, this is, glutathione is an antioxidant. <clears throat> um, it's primarily made in the liver. Uh, it's not something that you can eat because when you eat it, it's uh, broken down in the stomach. And so you can't just like take a pill of glutathione. They have them. 
uh, and the acetylglutathione, maybe it's a little better absorbed, but really, if your liver's not making it, uh, you're not gonna get very much of it. And it's used all over the body to prevent damage to mitochondria, to, um, to detoxify and cleanse and get rid of uh, oxygen-free radicals. And your eyeballs are really important because if you don't get rid of those oxygen-free radicals in your eyeballs, guess what you get? Macular degeneration, uh, among other things, but that's really important. So yes, glutathione, essential for, for your eyeballs. All right, lots of good questions, you guys. Keep them coming. We'll do as many as we can. Um, let's see here, we have, I live in Canada. This is from Janice. I live in Canada. I do take vitamin D with K2 because I've become vitamin D deficient in the winter. I was diagnosed with pre-diabetes. Should I begin taking Synechroma? Ah, oh, okay. Good. You know, there was a study done in uh, Canada um, on a, in a nursing home uh, where they added vitamin D. Uh, and they, they prevented the, um, the flu season. Uh, they prevented the flu season by, by adding vitamin D so that they kept everybody's vitamin D level stable. So that's a really good point that, uh, that uh, taking vitamin D during the winter because you get low in vitamin D. Some people do. Um, so the Synechroma has... Uh, 5,000 units of vitamin D, and that's adequate for a daily dose. And I've, I test people, and I find that between five and 10,000 a day puts them in the, in the normal, in the optimum range. There is a normal range over 30. There's an optimal range that's around 50, 50 between 50 and 80. Um, up to 100 is fine. Um, so, so that. Uh, yeah, the, the synochroma would be helpful. So if you're gonna if you're gonna take synochroma because you have prediabetes, then um, then yeah, you wouldn't need the extra vitamin D. Okay, David is asking about magnesium. He's heard that it's also good along with cinnamon. Can you chat a little bit about magnesium? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Recently, in a, a past webinar, we discussed magnesium and the, the essential function of magnesium. Um, uh, you know, every green in nature, all, all that green you see is all due to one thing, magnesium. Uh, so the molecule that we use that's called hemoglobin, that's red, why is it red? Because it has iron in the middle of it. And the iron allows it to hold on to oxygen. Uh, and that hemoglobin molecule is an amazing uh, way of holding on to oxygen, but allowing it to let go when there's low oxygen so that it can transport oxygen around your body. Um, that same molecule that is hemoglobin is uh, called um, chlorophyll in the plant. And instead of the iron, it has magnesium in it. And the magnesium uh, allows it uh, to uh, take in the light uh, and make uh, out of carbon dioxide and oxygen, uh, make uh, hydrocarbons, uh, they're called in water. So, um, so the magnesium is essential without the magnesium, the plant won't function. It's the same way if you have no hemoglobin, you won't function. Uh, uh, but we need magnesium the same way the plant does. There's over 300 different enzymes in our body that require magnesium. And a lot of those are energy production. So without magnesium, you know, we don't make energy very efficiently. And there's a lot of people deficient in magnesium because they don't eat greens. Everything green is green because it has magnesium in it. So eat greens. Uh, you're going to get a lot of magnesium that way. Another way to get enough magnesium is to eat beans, peas, lentils, seeds, nuts, um, all anything that will grow. Uh, like, you know, you could take um, a sunflower seed and grow it. 
so that sunflower seed has magnesium in it. Anything that will grow has magnesium in it. If you take rice and you take the germ and the bran off of it, you polish the rice so that only the, the starch remains, it won't grow, but it also doesn't have any magnesium in it. So the, anything that will grow does and anything that's green does. So those are the two things uh, to look at uh, when you're getting magnesium. And yeah, it's absolutely essential. Studies have shown that if you're low in magnesium, you could get insulin resistance, type two diabetes, just from that and for no other reason. So that's another thing. Remember, I started out with this. Uh, there's like so many different reasons why you might have type two. Low magnesium is one of them. Wow, very interesting. Someone had sent a message. Uh, this person lives in Michigan. Can you recommend places that will test for these types of deficiencies or minerals? or anything? Yes. Um, there's the, uh, almost any lab does it now, but um, the, the one I use is Genova Diagnostics in North Carolina. Uh, they have what's called a NutriVal, nutrient evaluation. And it looks at, it's, uh, the reason I like it is very comprehensive. It looks at your vitamins and minerals, amino acids, fatty acids, it uh, looks at your glutathione levels, CoQ10 levels. It looks for um, heavy metal toxicities, uh, minerals. Uh, and so it's really uh, broad in that it covers a lot of nutrients. It also looks at your mitochondria and how to function the mitochondria and your intestinal flora. If you have overgrowth of yeast or bacteria, all of that is part of the same test. So I like that one. That's the NutriVal from Genova Diagnostics. Um, I know there's a whole bunch of other labs that do them, um, but uh, I, don't, I don't use the other ones. And I think that the other labs don't require a physician's uh, prescription, that you could just send in the lab, get a kit, and send it back to them. Wow. Okay. I am going to also uh, plug Dr. Saunders' information here. I'm going to post it in the comments. Uh, he is available to be your virtual doctor. So I will post his contact information here. We get a lot of people that ask that, um, but he offers kind of like a dial a doc program. And so I'm going to post his information here. If you're interested in that, um, you know, maybe, yes, that'd be, give him a call, see if it's right for you. Okay. So I'm going to post that here and I'm going to keep going quickly. Sorry. We'll go through as many as we can. John is wondering about chromium. What can you tell us about chromium? Okay, chromium is a trace mineral and it's found in the soil and uh, a lot of different plants have it. The problem is that the plants don't need it. So they're gonna survive if there's no chromium. So low chromium soils will have low chromium in the plants. Selenium does the same thing. Um, and so even when they say that, that oh, that, um, what is it, onions and garlic, uh, uh, certain vegetables are high in chromium. They're not high in chromium if they're grown in a soil that contains a lot of chromium. Uh, that's the issue. So since our soils in the United States are depleted of chromium, I test a lot of people and low chromium is very common, uh, very common. So that's why I had that put in the in the um, synochroma, and that's what the chroma is in synochroma, is, is the chromium. Because being deficient in chromium is enough all by itself uh, to cause insulin resistance and diabetes. So um, in the 1970s, when they first figured this out, they're like, oh my gosh, chromium helps you use sugar more efficiently. Um, so it should be a good weight loss program. And they were giving people high doses of chromium picolinate, uh, and everybody was going on chromium picolinate to lose weight. Um, well, the problem with that is uh, it can be toxic in high amounts, and uh, and uh, and it doesn't really help you lose weight uh, if you continue to eat on the same uh, diet that you had before. So. Uh, it didn't work like you could take a pill and just take a pill and lose weight. But the reason it's in the synchroma is so that it can help you be more insulin sensitive 
so that uh, as you're doing the program, it'll be a lot easier to get the insulin down and, and lose, the, lose the extra fat. Okay, someone had asked if they can purchase just the Cinechroma. You definitely can. Uh, head to bartonwebinar.com. You'll find a link to the supplements there. And uh, someone else had also asked, Narissa asked how long, or excuse me, can I take Cinechroma at the same time as I take metformin? We get that question a lot too. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. You can take, they work totally differently and there's no interaction between them. Uh, so yes, you can take Cinechroma and Metformin and that's not a problem at all. Remember the Cinechroma is mostly replacing the things that could cause you to be insulin resistant uh, and then adding the cinnamon in, which kind of just sensitizes you to your insulin. Um, um, metformin works in a different way by preventing the body from using sugar and causing it to start burning fat for energy. So it's just, uh, it's a different process. So yeah, they can be used together. No problem. Uh, Nerissa is asking, how long does each phase of the diabetes reversal plan last? Oh, good question. Uh, anywhere from a couple of days to years. Uh, so it, de it depends on the individual. Some people are so far into type two that um, I had somebody who's insulin, which is normally insulin levels around five on a fasting specimen. Hers was over 160. Um, and so it took her a long time on the phase one to uh, program type program that she was using. Um, uh, it was months before she was in a fairly normal level of insulin uh, and no, didn't have insulin resistance. Um, and, and then it depends partly on the diet. Remember the guy for 30 days did bone broth only and completely reversed everything all at once? Yeah, so if you're not eating anything, if you're not eating any protein or fat or uh, or carbohydrates, then, then your body starts taking out all of that extra that you have, all that excess that's been built up over the years. And then what? And then you're insulin sensitive. So you can do it in a matter of days. So everybody's individual, both in the reasons um, why they have diabetes and then um, how, how fast they do it, depending on how much they eat. Okay. Uh, Petra is wondering about our webinars and they do usually last about an hour, roughly. Um, we usually have a topic that we discuss right away. Dr. Saunders uh, drops his knowledge to us usually in the beginning. Um, every other week we, we go back to the basics um, and then uh, the other weeks we usually have a specific topic that we are, are talking about. But then we open it up for all of your questions, uh, which is the majority of our webinar. So uh, we like to help you guys through this process. So that's typically what happens. Uh, Deborah has a question, two questions. What do I take for neuropathy? And what do I do when gaining weight with insulin? Okay. So for neuropathy, that's the reason we have Nervala. Nervala is supposed to help with neuropathy, but I want you to look at it as, as a help with neuropathy. This is not the cure for neuropathy because if you don't get the insulin down, if you don't get your blood sugar controlled, then, then all by itself, that may not be sufficient. Uh, some people may see some improvement, but it may not be sufficient because the nerves, uh, are, need to get enough sugar to them so that they can function. And what's happening here is the kidneys, the nerves, the heart um, are, are starving for sugar in a sea of sugar, right? They're, they're, th because it can't cross the barrier to get into where it's supposed to be because the insulin is resistant. So now it's not working to get in there. So only the fat cells are never insulin resistant. So you just can keep getting fatter and fatter and fatter, but your nerves are starving for sugar because it can't get through the barrier. So that's where um, the Nervala can help 
by improving the function of the uh, the, the blood vessels. Um, and uh, so that, that's what the benfotiamine does. And then the alpha lipoic acid helps the nerves to detoxify. All right, this is good. Uh, Ruby says, let's see here. I'm a 71 year old African-American woman. I am not diabetic, but I was once diagnosed as being pre-diabetic. Should I take Sinochroma? Um, uh, <laughs> well, let's see. Um, there well, are, there... Our team takes Sinochroma without yeah, being- You know what? I, I take Sinochroma and I'm not diabetic and I've never even been pre-diabetic. Um, when I have like women who were gestational diabetes, the first thing I do is put on Sinochroma. Why? Well, there's a reason they had gestational diabetes and, and they could be deficient in chromium or vanadium or selenium or vitamin D or magnesium. Um, and, and that, uh, so the answer to your question is, I think that would be a good idea. Um, there is a lot of other reasons too. For example, the 5,000 unit a day vitamin D prevents you from getting coronavirus. So uh, it doesn't prevent you from getting the virus. It prevents you from getting sick from the virus. That's, that's uh, what it is. Um, and that's all viruses, even influenza or uh, Ebola or, or whatever you're exposed to. Um, the, uh, the vitamin D helps you get rid of those, uh, those uh, viruses before they become a problem. Okay, someone is asking if they can purchase Cinechroma at a health food store or just our site. It is only available on our site right now. Um, yeah, I, I got it off Amazon. Yes, I can do it there too. Okay, we're, we're, we're getting down there into time. Let's see. All right, I haven't read this. Uh, Lavelle says, how do I manage my diabetes to help with kidney function after having diabetes or type two for 30 years and 20 years on insulin? My kidney specialist put me on lisinopril, which increases potassium. I should eat food with low potassium levels. What do you recommend to manage glucose on your program for two weeks now and adapt my kidney function to lower potassium? Okay. Um, the, if someone needs low potassium, that means the kidney function is compromised in some way because um, I don't want everybody to think that they should have a low potassium diet when they're uh, because they have diabetes. So if your kidney function is compromised, like you have uh, kidney failure, then, uh, then yes, you may need to have low potassium. Um, but that's not true with everybody. Um, so how do you adapt to uh, low potassium and still keep the, uh, the diabetes under control, the blood sugar? So first of all, Part of that is the kidneys have to get enough sugar too, that, that those cells are, uh, need energy in order to function. So if you're changing periodically from sugar burning to fat burning to sugar burning to fat burning, um, then um, what that does is helps make sure that the, the insulin resistance stays low so that your kidneys always have enough energy. Um, so the best thing you can do uh, for kidney function is to switch to fat burning periodically. How you do that uh, is what might be different for everyone. In some, in some cases, you're going to continue eating, but you're just going to eat high fiber things. So that's called a vegan ketogenic diet where all you eat is celery and broccoli and asparagus and, and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and then... Uh, other people are going to fast, like do a bone broth cleanse periodically. Uh, and that will keep the blood sugar down and allow the kidneys to continue to function and not add too much potassium. Okay. Speaking of fasting, I think this will be our last question. Susan, it says, when I fast, my sugars drop really low, below 72. What should I do? 
Whoa, that's cool. Okay, what that what that means is that um, what if you're eating and your blood sugar goes up higher like than 100, and then when you, you're fasting, it goes down below 70. That's a really good thing. What that means is that your uh, insulin resistance is decreasing, that you're improving the sensitivity of your insulin. And that's gonna keep your brain functioning and prevent you from getting neuropathy. It's gonna prevent you from getting uh, kidney disease. So, um, so by itself, do, no, don't do anything. The optimum is 70 to 90. And if you can keep your blood sugar between 70 and 90, um, that's the best place to be. Okay, this is good. Oh my goodness, you guys, thank you so much. So many questions. We didn't even, we weren't even able to get to all of them today. In fact, I'm gonna take a screenshot here of some of them that we weren't uh, able to get to. We will try to start off um, with those questions first next week, okay? So make sure you join us next week, same time. If you haven't registered, you can do so at bartonwebinar.com. What a great webinar. Lots of questions. Dr. Saunders, anything else you want to mention before we sign off for the day? Um, re just remember that, that the reason you have diabetes might be different than somebody else. So if somebody says, um, you know, uh, in, in three months, I reversed my diabetes and I'm all better. Um, don't feel bad if that's not you. You know what? It's okay. You know, you, you are different and that's okay. It's okay to be different. Good. You guys have a merry, merry Christmas. Uh, we appreciate you guys and we're so thankful for all of you. So we will see you next time as we wrap up our 2020. Bye guys.